When we left for Canada, um, my grandfather, he sort of put me aside and said, you are going to Canada now and maybe I will never see you again. And I said, sure, you probably won't see me. And it's very hard to admit that. And he said, never change who you are and never forget your values as Albanian. You are going to go into a new country, but remember, you're providing an example for your two other siblings. Edona Chaku's grandfather passed away 10 days after she and her family fled war-torn Albania. The breaking up of families and parting from loved ones is the price most immigrants pay. For Edona, then 15, coming to Canada was what she calls a spiritual death. The loss of her history, status, and family home. It was also to be a test of her courage and character. It was a big challenge for me because I didn't speak English much. I only knew how to say hi, bye. I was very confused what people were saying. The culture was totally different. A former A student, Adona enrolled in 10th grade and began the process of learning English, excelling in academics, and adjusting to life in her new country. People would put, would stay very free in class, you know, put their uh, feet up in the table and I'll be like, what is that? <laughs> you know, all those different things, you know, little things that make, make a difference when, when one comes into a new country. Despite many challenges, Adona maintained a 94% average and won over 20 academic and community awards and scholarships during the remainder of her high school years. Today, Adona concentrates on her dream of becoming a doctor. Enrolled in radiation science and nuclear medicine at the University of Toronto, she consistently features on the Dean's List. But academics are not the only thing that occupy Adona's time. She also volunteers for organizations such as UNICEF, the United Nations, Science for Peace, and the Herbert H. Carnegie Future ACES Foundation. I first met her when she became a scholarship recipient of ours in 2003 and our scholarship recipients are chosen for their incredible work in the community. And she's a dynamo. Volunteering in hospitals, um, volunteering in senior centers, uh, volunteering with kids. I currently teach as well. Uh, I teach in an elementary school. I teach math. And I love the job because it gives me an opportunity to work, to work with little kids. I never had that opportunity, actually. And I also teach in university, that's the other extreme now. So you have adults teaching. So I'm a teacher assistant at um, the U of T. I couldn't be prouder of what she has accomplished in her short time here in Canada. She exemplifies what we would like to see as a caring Canadian. I don't think I've accomplished so much. I mean, there's, I'm only 19 right now and there's so much more to be done. And uh, looking at the state of the world and, and the different things that, that we as individuals have to do, I haven't done anything. I really haven't. When I start to make a positive difference, then I just say, yes, this is where my achievements have, have started. Uh, Dona is just a fabulous young person uh, and we are absolutely thrilled. Uh, when uh, we see that she's the recipient of this, this wonderful award that recognizes a special kind of person. And so when one of our students brings honor to him or herself, uh, uh, she or he brings honor to the university, and we rejoice in this. You know, you always have those great kids, but then you have the ones that go above and beyond. And uh, she is one of those. I think the immigration experience uh, will make anybody um, stronger because it's uh, the, the challenges that define us and the way, the way we sort of overcome them, those define the power within us. And regardless of your age, regardless of your maturity, regardless of your uh, ethnicity, background, regardless of your academic abilities, if you put your mind to it, you can do it.